This is a solid state Tesla coil I found online. Pretty decent output for the little coil that could. This is my version, and it's terrifying. <laughs> In the 20 years that I've been doing high voltage work, I've Never really wanted to build a solid state Tesla coil. They can be super temperamental, really fragile. If you don't compliment them in the morning, they blow up. Funny how things change. Because now, I see them as the engineering masterpiece that they are. I'm loyal to spark gaps, so hippie J would be proud of me. But to understand how I went from spark gap coils to a transistorized Slayer coil, and eventually to this beautiful work of art capable of six inch arcs, Oh, and how Zach from Lab Coats and my buddy Joe from Architect factor into the equation, we have to go back about nine months. Because nine months ago, a brilliant subscriber of mine made an offer that I couldn't refuse. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, I'm Jay. Welcome back to Plasma Channel. Now, checking your email throughout the day is kind of a normal part of being a content creator. As I do, I woke from my slumber one morning and checked my email, while enjoying a morning sludge called black coffee, which, if you recall, this is what I think of black coffee. <laughs> Anyways, I received an interesting email from Zach, a loyal subscriber. Using a variation of Steve Ward's coil design, he built an impressive solid-state coil, and he was offering to work with me on designing a unique circuit board for my needs. This really piqued my interest, so we set up a video call. There's a whole world waiting for you out there that I'm just now starting to see myself. And you're helping me to get past my fear of SSTCs. So yeah, I look forward to this because I'm a big fan of compact builds. All of this, like all of this separated stuff that I have here and make it into one compact PCB. You should, see, you should see what my desk looks like right now. I feel like if you are in this field and you don't have stuff laying on the floor, then you're not taking it seriously. So yeah, the whole thing's a mess right now. <laughs> I hear you. After some thought, I decided, yeah, yeah, it's time to build a proper solid state Tesla coil. So that's exactly what I did, plasma channel style. And if I was going to put in the effort for my first SSTC, I wanted it to be a pancake, because pancakes inspire me. And I had five requirements for this design. First, it needs to be compact. Fundamentally, I care more about compactness and convenience than performance. Have one power cord which powers all the circuitry. Be adjustable for pulse width, frequency, and spark size. Easily disassembled for repairs, which turned out to be a great decision. <laughs> Lastly, be solid and sexy. With my goals laid out, I ordered the parts from Mauser and DigiKey and unpatiently waited. After what felt like an eternity, literally the next morning, supplies arrived. About to get swifty. The boards Zach had printed also came in, and they looked solid. They looked great. I'll be giving a couple of them away, and details will be at the end of the video, but I'm loving this logo right here. Anyways, there were a ton of parts to assemble. There are just so many. It was a bit hard to decide exactly where to start. So, as far as I was concerned, this left only one thing to do. Video, video montage. montage? Montage? Do you mean a montage? I know, I know, I use something besides clear acrylic. Brave. With the circuit built and the body complete, I set to work on the pancake secondary. No small task. The secondary turned out beautifully with 720 feet of wire. Seven turns of wire constituted the primary, which were held in position under the secondary, by these bolts. Bad idea. Then I bolted both the secondary and primary together onto the top of the base, which blended function with strength. The outer turn of the secondary connected to electrical ground through one of the mounting bolts. I was eager to test the circuit, and this newborn was thirsty for power. 
Franking the very act of 50%, she took a breath. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> Giving her full voltage, she screamed. <laughs> oh, yeah! Until she blew up. Turns out, I overheated the IGBTs. These are the digital switches which replace spark gaps. So, I ordered more, and waited. And waited. FedEx. A full week later, they came. Christmas in February. After replacing the IGBTs... <laughs> nope. This kind of stumped me, and I'm new to SSTCs, so Zach and I chatted again. After we talked operational theory and I went through each component, we didn't see any connection issues. Easter egg. That meant playing a game of Clue with every component. We determined the sparks my coil produced were continuous waves, so that meant my antenna feedback system was working. Next, I interrogated the gate driver chip. Giving it a field test, it couldn't walk in a straight line and was swerving at 60 hertz, which made no sense, so I replaced the chip. In the moment, I figured the chip had gone bad, so I threw it in the compactor. I had a brand new shiny chip, which just slid right into place. This got the coil back up and running to square one with continuous wave sparks. After a bit more discussion, I figured out my circuit contained an unnecessary diode. This little criminal sat right here, so I replaced it with a jump and gave the coil a spin. Come on, come on, come on! Oh! That totally did the trick, but something was limiting the power. In hindsight, the metal screws were a terrible idea. They were capacitively coupling to the secondary, causing arcing between primary and secondary. Cool fractals, though. So I set to work redesigning the primary coil structure. Metal bolts replaced with plasma cubes and an extra insulator on the top made a much better setup. It turned out beautifully, was structurally strong, and it fit right underneath the secondary. Putting the entire package back together, I gave it 75% and prayed. Cute, it's cute. All right, let's double up. Ah, let's give it a try. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Woo! And full power. <laughs> Dude! Dude! The secondary waveform looked great, and here's a spark event. So I cranked up the repetition rate. I just managed to snap these pictures, then my IGBTs died again. Another order, another week. At this point, I didn't like Christmas anymore. They weren't dying from overvoltage on the primary circuit, the IC circuit had proper voltage, the IGBTs didn't overheat, that left the gate drive transformer. Using his experience, Joe recommended I interrogate the gate drive transformer. Reviewing the voltage waveform on the output of the GDT, it was disgusting. It was choppy, uneven. That meant this little guy with its separate secondary coils and poor design was sending dirty signals to my IGBTs. So I rewound the GDT with intertwisted windings and symmetry. And while I was out, I cut a ventilation port underneath the transistors and one in the back of the base just to keep things cooler. I put everything back together, hopefully for the last time, and us feeling good about finally winning a game of Clue. I felt confident. Here's half power. <laughs> Baby! <laughs> and the full power tests will blow your mind, but first a word from Brilliant. Over the years, I've basically learned close to 100% of my high voltage knowledge through first-hand experimenting and online resources. And this video sponsor, Brilliant.org, is pretty much a slam dunk in those regards. Brilliant is an online platform which allows you to learn various fields of science, such as mathematics, computer science, gravitational physics, quantum objects, all in a hands-on way using visuals and multiple choice scenarios. It basically trains you in STEM. Every problem comes with step-by-step -step solutions which helps you to understand the reasoning behind each answer, which I totally love. I've used Brilliant for several months to complement my existing knowledge on probabilities, physics, and even electronics, and a course I really loved was on wave behaviors and propagation because that relates to Tesla coils. Brilliant.org is huge on supporting education through YouTube, so you can head to brilliant.org slash plasma channel to start learning for free, and the first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual subscription, which is pretty sweet. I'll leave extra information and links down below in the video description. If you want to help support my channel while basically getting smarter, go check them out. I'm super honored to partner with Brilliant because we have the exact same mission. 
When dealing with high voltage, use the one hand rule at all times. It saves lives. God, that's just insane. All right, so this is about five to six inches. <laughs> this is definitely my favorite project I've ever built for Plasma Channel. <laughs> Dude, this is just chaos. And minimum pulse width, maximum spark repetition. <laughs> so this coil also has the ability to do continuous wave as well. The arcs are hot, <laughs> but the IGBTs are probably hotter. The radiated RF field is also super impressive. Here's it wirelessly illuminating a xenon-filled tube. The tube's more than like six to eight inches away and the coil's only at half power. A glass light bulb also shows how strong that field is as well and you can tell the power throughput is pretty high. That filament is glowing red hot. And again, this is at half power. After all the problems I've had, uh, I think it's pretty resilient. The gate drive transformer was probably the issue the entire time, but since I'm new to this, I had to learn the hard way and commit genocide on an entire family of IGBTs first to learn the lesson. But I'll bet you those little IGBTs are smiling down from little transistor heaven, happy at what they contributed to. Just gorgeous. Just as beautiful is the theory of operation behind how this pancake solid state Tesla coil works. It relies on an antenna feedback system that only takes about 30 seconds to explain. This is the radiated waveform during spark events. These peaks are the sparks. Zooming in, you'll notice each spark event is a rather long oscillation. Adjusting the spark frequency knob causes more of these events per second, and adjusting the pulse width changes the duration of these oscillation events. When power is pulsed into the secondary, it rings at its natural resonant frequency, which you'll see here is around 285 kilohertz. Below the pancake is a feedback system, including an antenna and logic circuitry, which picks up on these oscillations and pulses power into the GDT at that same rate. The GDT essentially turns the transistors on and off at that natural frequency, and thus the primary coil. This ensures the secondary coil is driven at resonance, and resonance equals massive voltages. Huge thank you to Zach for giving me the push I needed. Go check out his channel, Lab Coats, to see what other crazy things he does. He's recently put out a tutorial video on how to build a quasi-continuous wave coil with really impressive arc size. My friend Joe also helped tremendously with troubleshooting, and unless you're a savage, you'll know he's a founding member of Arc Attack. He's cool enough to let me attempt this, and smart enough to make Tesla coil kits. I'll link Arc Attack's YouTube channel and the website down below. Yeah, so solid state Tesla coils are pretty sweet. They're still kind of fragile and really complex in like a serial killer kind of way, but I think I'm in love. I hope you're all happy that you've bullied me for years to make one of these, because I am. And I mentioned this was a giveaway. Two boards survived my wrath unscathed. So to be in the running, leave a comment down below and share this video with someone who might be inspired by it. And don't forget to subscribe. At the end of four full weeks, I'll pick the two winners and they'll be informed through the comment section or through email. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to all the Patreons who continue to support my work. Drop a comment down below to leave your thoughts on this project, subscribe, and stay classy. Oh.